He looked for a city that hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know the story of the Jewish American tourist who was visiting in Poland, and uh, remember that there was a famous rabbi, Rabbi Chaim, uh, who lived in this particular town through which he was traveling. He got the address uh, at the post office, and he went down to this little hut, knocked at the door, an old bearded man met him at the door. And he looked quizzically at the man, and he said, Rabbi Chaim? Yes, come in. And the man stepped into the little hut, looked around, and he saw a table and a bed and a chair. And he said, Do you live here? Yes. Well, where's your furniture? And the rabbi said, Well, where's yours? <laughs> well, you don't understand, sir. I'm, I'm just traveling through. He said, Well, so am I. Yeah, so am I. Remember Abraham, as he went through the land, he made a conscious choice not to live in a city. He lived the rest of his days in a tent. Everywhere he went, he pitched his tent and he built an altar. And the tent said, I don't belong here. I'm just passing through. And, and we need to get weaned from this world again. And you know the sufferings and sorrows and heartbreak that weans us from the world. It makes the rapture look a lot better every day, doesn't it? We don't belong down here. And that tent is a reminder. And every time they drove in the tent pegs, it was as if he was saying, this is a temporary arrangement. I beseech you, says Peter, as pilgrims and strangers, abstain from fleshly lust. The word there, fleshly lust, simply means desires associated with the body. Gourmet food. The latest golf video. A nice car. There's nothing wrong with these things. It's loving them that's wrong. Turn them into something that will have eternal significance. You, you take me over and show me George Mueller's ministry. Here's a man who in the 1800s gave away over a million pounds. We're talking 25 million American dollars today. How did he do it? I'll tell you how. Assemblies of God's people had auctions. And they auctioned off all their silver and their tapestries and their paintings and they downsized and they poured their money into the work of God. Who was the number one contributor to the work of the China Inland Mission? It was the Assemblies of England who sent the money through George Mueller out to the mission field. And they took their frozen assets and turned them into eternal gain. Now, I'm not saying go and buy your clothes at the Salvation Army. I happen to know some people who do. But I'm just simply saying, if we can extract from our hearts these things, then we can look at them a little more dispassionately and say, you know, I could use this. Turn it into eternal riches while you have time. Because quite frankly, all your fancy stuff is going to just turn to dust anyway.